Hi everyone, Mike from the Excel Trainer here. A couple of weeks ago, somebody asked me if there was a way to calculate the distance between two postcodes in Excel and show it on a map. Now, I'm not going to cover that exact solution here, but the question itself gave me an idea for a short YouTube video. If you want to follow along, you can download a copy of the demo file from the link in the description below. This is what I'm going to create. Rather than using postcodes, I'm using locations. I've entered the location names into two cells and a formula calculates the distance between the locations and then plots it on a map. Now, before I start, I don't want to waste your time watching a video that doesn't solve your problem. So just a couple of points. Firstly, this can only be done in Excel for Windows. And secondly, you need to have access to the data types feature on the data menu. And that isn't available in all versions of Excel. Finally, the distance calculated by the formula is a straight line distance. It's not the driving distance. So if you need accurate driving distances, for example, to calculate transport costs or travel expenses, this probably isn't the best way to do it. So I won't take it personally if you bail out now, but if you're staying, I'll get on with the video. So here I have a copy of the file without the map in it. This is the copy I've made available for download. I've typed the two locations into A4 and A5. If you want to overtype these with your own locations, feel free. To calculate the distance between the locations, I'll need to use the longitude and latitude values of the locations. If you're not familiar with those terms, every place on Earth has a longitude and latitude value. Latitudes are the horizontal lines that measure distance north or south of the equator. Longitudes are vertical lines that measure east or west of a predefined point, and that point is the meridian in Greenwich in the UK. So, how do I get the longitude and latitude values for a location? Well, there's a number of options. One way is to Google them and type them into the cells, but that's a manual process. You could automate it by connecting the Excel workbook to Google Maps, but that requires you get and set up a Google Maps API key. And my intention was to make this a non-technical tutorial. So let me show you the solution I came up with. I need to convert the locations in A4 and A5 from being plain text entries into geographic data types, which I'll do by selecting A4 and A5, clicking on data and clicking on geography in the data type section on the ribbon. Now Excel recognizes those two cells as containing geographical data rather than text data. You can tell that because of the symbol to the left of each item. Back in the old days, a cell could only store text strings or numeric values, but now cells can store other data types. I've got A4 and A5 selected, and I'm going to click on the card icon at the top right of the selection. And that gives me a list, and that list is a list of the properties of those geographical data types. And I'm going to select latitude. And Excel puts the latitude value of Manchester and London into the next available blank column. I've still got A4 and A5 selected. So I'll click the card icon again and select longitude. And that puts the longitude value of those two locations in the next column, which is column C. What you've actually got in these four cells here are formulas. If we just take B4, for example, you've got a formula that says A4 dot latitude, which says, give me the latitude value of the geographic data type, which is in A4. To calculate the distance between the two locations, I'm going to use the formula that I've put in the first text box. And I don't really want to spend time in this video typing it all up. So I'll just select the text, copy, go to B7 and paste. 
and the value that we get is the distance in miles between Manchester and London based on the values in B4, B5, C4 and C5 and the formula. To create the map, I'm going to use Excel's built-in mapping tool. As I said, this is only available on Excel for Windows. I'll start by selecting A3 to A5. I'm going to include the heading location, but I don't need to include the longitude and latitude values because they are not needed to create the map. They were only needed to calculate the distance. Click on Insert, click on 3D Map, and click Open 3D Maps. And this will open up Excel's built-in mapping tool. On the right hand side, you can see that Excel has set the location column from my spreadsheet to be the location and it's specified that they are cities. Now, if it's incorrectly identified the items, I can click the drop down arrow and I can choose the correct type of geographical data. But in this case, it is correct. So I'll just leave it as it is. But I'll close the field list down. I don't need to add anything else to the panel on the right hand side. And I'll also zoom in by using the plus sign at the bottom left. The little markers it's added are for Manchester and London. And I'm going to change the color of those markers to black by going to layer options and choosing black for the colour and I'm also going to make them smaller. I'll just set them to 50% of their current size. Now I can also change the style of the map or the theme as they call it by going up to themes and I get a number of different themes to choose from. I'm going to go for this second one here. Click on that and it just changes the overall style of the map. At this point, the map is complete. There are other things I want to add to it, but they cannot be done on the mapping tool. I have to go back to Excel to do that. So at this point, I will take a screenshot of the map by clicking on Capture Screen. That will take a screenshot excluding those buttons at the bottom right. And then I can close the mapping tool down. And back in Excel, I'm going to paste the screenshot that it took. It stored that screenshot on the clipboard, so I'll just paste it. And there we go. Position it where I want it. To add the pins, I'll click on Insert Icons and search for Pin and select this pin here. The reason I'm going for this one rather than this one is because the one that is black allows me to change its fill colour. So I'll select that and click insert. And it's added the pin into the spreadsheet over in column A. It's not actually in a selling column A, it's floating over the top. So I can just drag that across and position it where I want it on the map. And I'll change the colour by going up to graphics format, graphics fill and choose a colour. And then rather than repeating the process manually, I'll just copy and paste control C, control V and position the second pin where I want it. And I can change the color of that one as well. So I can have both pins, different colors. Finally, I want a text box at the top of the map to display the distance between the locations. If we look at the completed version, you can see that it says Manchester hyphen London colon, and then the number of miles, which is on a separate line. In A8, I'll enter a formula to build up that string, and then I'll set the source of the text box to A8. Rather than me typing the formula again to save time, I'll copy the formula from this text box that I've placed in the spreadsheet and just paste it into A8. Now it's coming up with value, but before I fix that, let me just explain the formula. If we look at the formula either in the formula bar or in the text box. I've started the string with the contents of A4, which is the first location, followed by space hyphen space, followed by the contents of A5, which is the second location, followed by a colon and a space, CHAR10 generates 
a line break. It forces what comes next to be on a new line. And what comes next is the contents of B7, which is the number of miles. And that's then followed by a space and the word miles. The formula, as you can see, generates an error. And as I said earlier, the contents of A4 and A5 are not text data. They're geographic data. And that is causing a problem with the formula. To fix that, what I need to do is edit the formula and I need to include within that formula the value to text function. So if I put in here value to text and put brackets around A4 and then value to text and brackets around A5. What value to text does is it converts non-text values to text. So now you can see that we've got what's in A4 joined to space hyphen space, joined to what's in A5, joined to colon space, joined to a new line, although you don't see the new line in here, joined to what's in B7, joined to space miles. Where that new line, that line break comes in, you'll see in the text box. So finally, I will click on insert text box, add a text box onto the map. And there we go. And with the text box selected, click in the formula bar and type equals A8. So what I'm doing is I'm saying the contents of that text box are coming from A8 and it's picked up what's in A8, but it has included the line break. So the number of miles will always appear on a separate line. And I can position that text box exactly where I want it. If I want to uh, change the, the background color, I can go to shape format, shape fill and choose a color. If I want to make the, the font bigger, uh, I can go and do that in the usual way. If I want to change the color of the font, I can do that as well. Now, it's not perfect by any means. There are a couple of issues. As I said, firstly, the distance calculated by the formula is a straight line distance, not the driving distance. And secondly, if you change the locations, so if I went to A4 or A5 and typed in different locations, the map doesn't automatically update because it's a screenshot. You'd need to open 3D maps, click the refresh data button on the toolbar, click capture screen, close the map tool, paste the map back into the spreadsheet. And at that point, the screenshot would actually be in front of the pins and text box. So you'd need to use centre back to move the screenshot behind the pins and text box. But as a one off, maybe to include in a report or presentation, this is actually a great way to display distance between two locations. Did you find this video useful? If you did, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you'd like to keep up to date with what I'm up to, you can sign up for my free weekly newsletter. You can do that at theexceltrainer.co.uk. But until the next time, have an excellent day.